to um, the last talk of this session. Um, um, so uh, this is uh, Gilles uh, Doff who is going to uh, give uh, this talk. So Gilles Doff is an uh, embedded engineer um, since 2006 uh, in Savoir Faire Linux uh, based in uh, France, uh, in uh, Rennes, in the Bretagne. And um, Gilles promotes and develops uh, free software uh, and open source through a variety of uh, projects um, in robotics and uh, embedded uh, development. Um, so the floor is yours, uh, Gilles. Um, please go ahead. Thank you, uh, thank you, Emmanuel. Do you do you hear me well? Okay. We hear you fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, hello everyone. Um, thank you for uh, for attending uh, this last presentation uh, of this Riot Summit. Uh, my name is, is Gilles Duff and uh, I work uh, now with indeed as a project director and embedded uh, software engineer um, at Savoir Faire Linux, uh, which is a, a Canadian company. But if indeed we have a, a, an office in Rennes in France where, uh, where I work. Um, during this presentation, I will uh, approach the fast loading uh, of an application on the Cortex M4 uh, in an hybrid architecture context with a, a, a Cortex A7 uh, associated uh, uh, processor. Uh, but, but before starting, uh, I would like to thank uh, the entire uh, uh, Riot maintainer contributors uh, team for organizing this summit and for the, 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 the quality of our work on this project for, for several, several years. Um, and uh, I would like to thank uh, Savoir Faire Linux for allowing me to, to attend and participate in this new uh, Riot summit. So um, we will study here um, the, the, the STM32MP1 uh, use case uh, built by one of our partner, uh, ST Micro Microelectronics, um, and which is an, a, 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 an hybrid architecture. Um, uh, before discussing um, the integration of Riot in this chip, um, I will, uh, uh, I will uh, introduce it to, to, to you. So um, about the, the, the uh, STM32MP1 uh, family, um, we will uh, specifically talk about uh, the STM32MP157CAC, um, which is composed uh, of a dual Cortex A7 microprocessor and a Cortex M4 uh, uh, microcontroller. Um, among others, it has a memory and floating point management unit. It's also made of You, we hear you fine. We see you fine. You can continue. Yes, I, I, I hear someone in the in the mic, uh, microphone. Let me check that. Oh, I think it was in Gaverton. It's okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, so. Um, so the the, the STM32 MP uh, 157 CAC uh, as a memory and fronting point unit management. Uh, it's also made of a GPU and uh, several uh, peripherals. Uh, uh, but uh, for some simplicity, uh, we will call this component uh, the, the, the MP1. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes we'll call uh, MP the Cortex S7 and MC the, the, the Cortex M4. So, um, the demonstration board, uh, we, we, which uh, holds the STM trend, uh, the MP1, uh, is the STM32 MP157 C minus DK2. This card offers a lot of connectivity, uh, with in particular uh, Ethernet connector, a USB connector. Uh, LEDs, an HDMI connector, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, touchscreen, extension connectors, and so more. I give you the link uh, to, to have uh, uh, more information uh, about it. About peripheral, um, here is a edge and complex uh, table from um, ST uh, Microelectronics uh, summarizing all the peripheral of the MP1 
Uh, we can see that some devices are reserved uh, for Cortex M4, uh, while the others are reserved uh, for Cortex S7, uh, or still others are shared between both. Um, some are securely in a trust zone concept, um, while others uh, are not. Uh, we will not discuss the, the, the trust zone concept in this uh, in this presentation. Um, but it is, it is interesting to note that the, uh, some uh, uh, component like the external uh, interrupt controller that you can see uh, in upper left uh, and the GPIO controller are uh, shared between the Cortex-M4 and the Cortex-A7, uh, like also the, the, all the SRAMs. Uh, we will come back um, on this later in the presentation. So, uh, some specificities. The, the shared the shared resources um, between the Cortex uh, A7 and the Cortex M4 uh, um, there is some uh, some uh, some um, certain resources are shared. Uh, this this is the case uh, of uh, of uh, GPIOs as we saw in the in the last table, um, uh, and in some cases uh, you could need to, um, uh, for example, uh, to to protect these GPIOs when you you, you use them. For example, uh, we can imagine a GPIO read as an input uh, on the Cortex M4 uh, cannot uh, at the same time be configured as output uh, by the Cortex A7. There are uh, therefore uh, some hardware semaphore uh, mechanism called uh, HSEM to avoid uh, concurrent uh, accesses. Also, uh, the MP1 um, uh, the MP1 not, does not have a flash memory like over uh, STM32 uh, that I could say they are more uh, classical. Uh, so the M4 Cortex part only has access to SRAM memory. Uh, this will um, force us to cheat um, to load Riot into the, the Cortex M4 in a, in a no, um, uh, conventional way. Uh, the Cortex M4 uh, can be loaded and started by the bootloader, uh, which is a, a U-boot uh, in your case, uh, by a Linux mainline kernel, uh, which uh, which has the framework to, to do that, or by an OpenST Linux kernel, which is a uh, an open source kernel too, but uh, with some uh, specific uh, uh, patches and uh, from from uh, ST Micro Electronics. Uh, so, uh, in addition to clock and regulators, the OpenST kernel uh, can configure all the resources of the Cortex M4. Um, and there is a, something a little bit special we will see after that uh, is that the Cortex M4 can also be configured uh, by himself uh, in a in sort of um, special uh, mode. Um, about uh, boot modes of the of the board of the demonstration board. Uh, you can see in the left table that the 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 MP1 has uh, several uh, boot mode eight, uh, and it can boot from uh, from various memories, uh, NOR, EMMC, uh, NAND, SD card, and more. Um, but um, um, the, the demonstration board uh, only have uh, SD card type memory. Some so some modes have been uh, deactivated, like you can see in the in the right uh, table. Uh, only boot zero and boot two can be configured. So uh, only uh, URT USB, which is uh, most a, a, a recovery mode. Uh, nor QSPI uh, is not used because uh, there is no such memory on the on the board, and um, remains the reserved mode and the SD card mode. We will talk of this uh, reserved mode and SD card mode uh, just after. So uh, the SD card mode is the most classical one. Um, uh, here, the Cortex A7 is booted first, and the Cortex M4 is altered uh, when the the, the ROM uh, is is launched. So um, the bootable ROM. So, so uh, the Cortex M4 can only be powered up uh, by the Cortex A7 uh, in this context, uh, and and by the the bootloader or Linux operating system. Um, 
I did not uh, experiment. Um, there are two two um, boot mode, um, uh, secure boot and basic mode. Uh, I did not experiment secure boot. Thus, uh, this presentation uh, will only focus on basic mode um, uh, and basic pro boot process. So, uh, in a classic uh, Linux boot process, uh, the bootable ROM, uh, the ROM code you see on the on the the schema um, uh, is the first to be launched. Uh, it will load after the the ifsbl, which is the first stage bootloader, uh, from a fixed uh, fixed address place uh, according uh, to the sele selected uh, 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 boot mode. When uh, SD card boot mode is selected, uh, the bootable ROM. Uh, we look for the FSBL. Um, here it's uh, so uh, U boot uh, SPL at the beginning of the SD card uh, storage, and we load it uh, into the Cortex A7 uh, CSRAM, which is a, a small SRAM available for the Cortex A7. Once uh, the, the FSBL uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, started, uh, um, it is the first stage to know um, uh, about devices and mainly external memories like DDR. So uh, it can configure the DDR, uh, the clocks also sources according to the embedded device tree. Uh, and once done, it passes uh, the, the end to the ESSBL, the second stage bootloader. Uh, here it's the final U boot bootloader. Um, there you have um, um, a, a bootloader um, uh, um, uh, with access to the whole hardware uh, supported by 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 the by U boot. Um, the Linux kernel and the device tree cannot be loaded uh, um, uh, from the SD card partition um, uh, formatted here with a, a XT4 file system. Um, and once done, the Linux kernel uh, is loaded and launched. Um, it will initialize all uh, remaining hardware listed in this device tree and move the root file system to launch all uh, user space services. The resolve mode. Uh, this one uh, is really much uh, simpler and is not uh, so much reserved uh, as it seems. Um, Reserve mode, you can see reserve mode as a debugging mode for the uh, microcontroller, the Cortex M4. Um, uh, ST microelectronics also called him uh, engineering mode. Uh, in this mode, uh, only the microcontroller is started. Uh, GMP is altered, uh, so uh, all clocks have to be set up by the Cortex M4 itself. Um, and as there is no flash memory, uh, the code has to be uh, reflashed after each reboot. Um, it's why it is the the, the mode that uh, looks like the most to the uh, classical STM forty two uh, uh, families. So, uh, Riot OS and uh, engineering mode. Um, from Riot side, um, we could first think that the engineering mode uh, is like developing for the more classical STM42 um, Cortex M4 target, like I, I just said. But there is some slight differences uh, that uh, uh, really make the thing uh, uh, harder. About the Cortex M4 SRAM overview. Um, the MP1 uh, family uh, uses four SRAM contiguous banks uh, at the given address for uh, uh, a total uh, amount of uh, 384 uh, kilobytes. Uh, there is also a retention RAM, uh, reach RAM of uh, 64 kilobytes, which is not erased when entering standby power management mode. Uh, and is then uh, quickly available when uh, 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 on wake up. Um, the read RAM starts at, at address uh, zero, uh, which is also the, the default address of the vector table for Cortex uh, M. So um, it will um, it is important uh, after um, in the uh, SD card mode. Um, however, uh, at this moment in the generic mode, the, the read RAM doesn't work. Um, uh, but uh, it should. Um, uh, I have to investigate this, but the SRAM banks are sufficient, are sufficient uh, 
uh, to make a riot work uh, as riot is using the the vitor register um, uh, which is the vector remap register from the system control block uh, to remap the vector table so um, let's talk about the the how uh, the, the cortex m4 uh, sram is seen from riot um, if we have no ROM ways, the, 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 the code, the, the ELF binary loaded in the, as there is no flash memory. Um, where, wherever you decide in the RAM, because uh, a part uh, the ROM is fake and, and it will be in reality a part of the SRAM uh, or uh, red RAM. Uh, so the, 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 the ELF binary can be flashed wherever you want in those memories. Um, it makes uh, ROM and RAM size uh, customizable uh, according to your needs. Um, um, and in this mode, in engineering mode, flashing the binary uh, is done using on the non-board ST-Link uh, V2 uh, programmer on the target is power read up like you can find so like on, uh, on some uh, nuclear boards. Uh, in the screenshots, you have the, the definition in the stm 42 underscore mem underscore length point do, uh, dot uh, make file. Uh, here you can see uh, uh, we test uh, a macro to know if you are in generic mode to not use the red RAM. Uh, and uh, and uh, so you we could use uh, all the, the, the available, uh, available SRAM uh, bank for, for RAM. Another important uh, uh, subject is the clocks. When uh, booting, uh, the HCI uh, clock is enabled by default by the bootable RAM code. Uh, overclock sources have to be uh, configured by Riot to be enabled. Uh, actual pull request uh, to add MP1 support to Riot enables uh, HCI clock source and configure the PLL3 as the main source for the system core clock. Uh, to get the best frequencies, the highest frequencies for each uh, peripheral uh, bus. Um, uh, I patched the um, CLK underscore conf, clock conf tool, uh, which has been written before for um, uh, STM32 family uh, to determine uh, PLL uh, value and uh, you just uh, 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 give him the, the core clock you want, uh, the, the H, uh, HSE frequency and the LSE frequency to, uh, and it will make uh, all the, the, it will compute all the, the, the frequencies you need. Uh, you can see it in the screenshots there. Um, you have, uh, uh, we, we defined a, a core clock of uh, 208 uh, megahertz. Uh, the maximum uh, the data sheet gives is 209 megahertz, but it is rounded, so as it must take an integer, uh, uh, 208 megahertz is, uh, is, quite, uh, is quite good. Uh, and uh, uh, below you have the, 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 the clock, uh, the PLL um, uh, computed, uh, and just you have to paste the result of the, uh, the given a uh, command to, to set up your PLL in your uh, either file. Um, instead, you can define this by hand with using the STM32 cube software, which is uh, really well made and give um, uh, very well, uh, very good uh, vision of uh, uh, clocks tree. Uh, but it is a very uh, heavy uh, tool. So uh, um, uh, it could be good to just uh, use a small tool like this one, and it is also integrated directly in Riot. Um, about uh, peripheral, uh, only a minimal set of peripheral uh, are supported in the pull request. Uh, uh, mainly timers, uh, URs, GPIO, uh, uh, and I2C, but I2C has, has not been tested uh, for now. Uh, it should be soon, but it has not been yet. Um, yeah, the, 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 already, uh, the already existing drivers uh, of uh, STM32 were used uh, because it's the same uh, hardware block, uh, but there is sometimes some differences, like for GPIOs, the, the computation uh, is not the same, and, uh, but the, 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 
the first the first um, support I made before the, uh, creating the pull request was made with the the old uh, STM32 uh, uh, source tree, and uh, I, I, I adapted to the new uh, STM32 uh, uh, source tree with common parts, and it was uh, uh, very very easy uh, to to make to make the port with this uh, of the peripheral with this, this with this new design. Um, about tools. Um, of course, my, my my setup is based on Linux. Um, I use uh, a very standard uh, distro uh, Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, um, just the the, the, um, uh, the, the, the provided packages, uh, Build Essential, uh, the toolchain, and uh, GDB uh, uh, minus multi arch are some uh, required packages. Uh, I do not guarantee that this list uh, is exhaustive, uh, but uh, I think uh, uh, it should already uh, be the the, uh, the minimum to to uh, to to use a, a Riot and debug for the MP1. Uh, the only tool I needed to compile from scratch is OpenCD, which supports um, uh, the MP1 in last commits. Uh, you could also as well use the the, the OpenCD from the OpenCD Linux SDK. Um, I just give uh, the commit number in the uh, in OpenCD as uh, uh, OpenCD uh, has no tags uh, since a long time, uh, so um, uh, you have to to mainly uh, compile it. I don't expect uh, uh, to find a release for now. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a real problem. Uh, so build uh, and test. Um, the pull request is still in review, so uh, at the time of this presentation, I give you the, my custom repository, which is the one of the of the of the pull request. Uh, you just have to clone it um, uh, and and just type the, this board onto the um, uh, this command onto the, on the onto the board is plugged, and uh, you will have a, a, a running a, a riot on um, STM32 MP1. Uh, uh, in engineering mode, so only the, the, the Cortex-M4. Uh, i show you a quick demo. You see my screen, I think? Yes, I see it. So uh, you just uh, um, type the command I gave. Uh, we have here um, um, a terminal. I flash. So now. It's not plugged. <laughs> okay. Hi. Right. There, uh, it is flashing. That's done. And here you have the the terminal, so you can. Uh, it's the test per, um, uh, GPIO uh, preferred to GPIO test, so you can set some uh, GPIO as it's uh, active on low level. You can see maybe you don't know, but Let's try uh, on the camera the LED that is blinking. And so uh, here it's the is the uh, engineering mode. Only the Cortex M4 is available, and uh, we of course uh, want more. So uh, I go back to the presentation. And so uh, I spoke uh, briefly about Linux. So let's go further with Linux and um, let's talk about it. Um, uh, and uh, it is uh, Linux will be used in the SD card mode we, we saw uh, just before. Uh, and we will see how we can um, launch Riot from directly from Linux uh, using a, a Linux kernel uh, framework. So just before a word about Linux. Um, the Linux, um, uh, there are two major embedded uh, distribution, uh, Linux distribution, Buildroot and Yocto. Uh, even if both support the MP1, Buildroot can quickly and simply build the full BSP to test Riot firmware. Managing the firmware uh, does not depend on user space, but on Linux kernel. Here, the kernel version used in Buildroot is the 5.7 uh, mainline. It's not uh, uh, a kernel from STMicroelectronics, it's the, is the uh, common 
uh, kernel you can find online, uh, you can find mainline. Um, ST microelectronics uh, provides uh, an OpenST Linux distribution based uh, on Yocto and an open source ST uh, Linux kernel, which has mainly the capability to fully configure uh, the Cortex M4 uh, peripheral through the device tree. But um, this kernel, even uh, if open source does not uh, get benefits from the last COVID features, uh, security bugs, fixes from the mainline kernel. So, um, uh, uh, here is the, the, the uh, here is the list of commands uh, to build a full functional build with distribution for the STM uh, 32 MP uh, one demonstration board we have here. Um, if you want to know more um, uh, about uh, Billroot and Linux, uh, I pro just provide you the link uh, to some very good articles uh, on how to build and install Linux on MP1. Uh, this article series uh, has been written by Thomas Betazzoni from Bootlin, uh, and, uh, and uh, they are uh, really a um, uh, 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 reference um, uh, on that subject. About uh, the device tree. Um, the device tree uh, describes in an universal way uh, the hardware. However, uh, each component does not need the same information. For instance, if the Linux kernel needs uh, to know how to set up I2C ports, uh, for example, if SBL does not need it, but it needs to know how to configure clock sources and PLL. Thus, uh, the device tree syntax is universal, but the information it provides is not. Uh, one very important thing uh, to not do in the Riot firmware uh, loaded with uh, the remote proc uh, uh, framework is the Linux kernel framework to load firmware into the Cortex M4 uh, is to reconfigure uh, is to reconfigure clocks. If you do so, uh, you risk making Linux die as well as the Cortex A7, as all the operating system is relying uh, relying on FSBL clock configuration. So uh, it's like if uh, someone else uh, suddenly reconfigure your clock if, uh, and it was not expected, so all is, all is broken. So one rule is to never, never, never update source clocks in firmware when, running, when using a, a remote pod. So let's talk about uh, remote proc. Um, Linux uses remote proc uh, kernel framework to load the Cortex A7 uh, firmware into SRAM and start it. Uh, as the MP is already uh, started and configured, it is uh, impossible to change the uh, VTOR uh, register we have uh, token, uh, we have seen just before to update the vector table address. Uh, thus, uh, the firmware must be loaded uh, in a red RAM, RAM, absolutely. Um, hopefully, uh, and unlike in engineering mode, the RetroAM is available and can be used to flash the firmware in uh, when uh, in SD card mode and uh, running for Linux or U-Boot. So um, firmwares are stored under slash lib uh, firmware directory from the Linux uh, uh, rootfs. It's where all the firmwares are uh, generally stored. Uh, the Linux kernel checks there by default to find firmwares. Uh, Here you have uh, an example of um, device tree to configure the remote proc uh, framework on the Linux side. Um, so uh, you have uh, the, the uh, some uh, specific um, uh, configuration like the, 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 the resets of the, the GMCU of the Cortex M4. Uh, um, uh, you have the old boot to authorize the boot of the of the of the per Cortex M4. Uh, the, uh, TZ is for the the trust zone. Uh, the status is disabled, but it is activated in, a, in another um, uh, part of the of the device tree. Just we can see just uh, uh, under, uh, and this part describes the memory uh, region. Uh, the Cortex A7, uh, so the Linux will access. So you can see the read RAM, uh, uh, MCU RAM, and MCU RAM 2, which are part of the ISRAM uh, bank we saw previously. Um, and there is an interesting thing here. It's the M boxes, uh, the IPCC, IPCC 1, IPCC 2, 0. Um, it is the interprocessor 
communication. Uh, it is an atomic way uh, to for the Cortex A7 and the Cortex M4 to communicate to communicate uh, in an atomic way with um, um, with an, uh, a mailbox layer uh, on top of this. Uh, it is not implemented now uh, in the pull request, but it's one of the further step, uh, which can maybe rely on the on the uh, core uh, 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 mailbox uh, already included uh, in Riot. So um, about the bootloader, you can also use air uh, air proc in U boot, which is uh, nearly the same framework done uh, under uh, uh, Linux. Uh, just the command change because it's not the same environment, uh, but uh, uh, the principles stay the same. So uh, just a quick last demo. Here we have two uh, serial port. I turn off the board. I switch the mode to set the SD card mode. I launch. So here, uh, I'll show you again. There, okay. So here I'm in uh, U-boot. So let's start by uh, U-boot. Um, we will just uh, type the, the the command you have in the slide. So just you need the AirProc framework in U-boot. So I can do uh, not sure this command is in the, the slide, but you can list all the um, remote processors available. So you have here the uh, uh, Cortex M4 visible. So uh, we will uh, now um, um, use uh, the, 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 the command to load it. Uh, I check it again because I don't know it. Uh, so ext for load mmt0 partition 4 at an already set up address. And it is especially firmware. This strange name is not coming from Riot. It's just a name um, um, I put to rename it from uh, Riot because it is the default name in the kernel Linux uh, uh, for the the, 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 the the firmware. So it is the test. So now it's loaded in memory. Now we will load it. Uh, the, Given address here and should be good. Oh, made a mistake, sorry. So now it's a success. The firmware is loaded in the in the in the Cortex M4, and we can start it. Just change my um, so here I have nothing. I start ah sorry I start it, and there I have a riot running in in a, in U boot. So, um, let's boot the kernel. Somewhere is still working. No reason to stop it. Yeah, it's rushing for DHCP. Okay. So now I'm in Linux. I try to. So here is the firmware. If I uh, echo echo the firmware name in the slash sys class remote proc remote proc zero firmware file, 
it will uh, search for this file in the slash lib firmware directory. And now I start it. Ah, context. Sorry, my bad, because it was already started. Restart the board. Okay. So here I should say uh, the firmware to load, but as it is the default name, it's not necessary, but let's do it. And now I can start it. So it tell me that the uh, remote processor is now up. Let's check and it's okay. And we again could type or command and access GPIO like um, we did in engineering mode. So uh, we have a, a cortex m for firmware running aside um, a Linux uh, system. So in the future, so much things uh, to do. Um, we need to, um, uh, I need to finalize the open uh, pull, re pull request. Uh, you have the link there. Uh, thanks uh, for the review. And uh, I have so much things to, to correct. Um, there is also a remaining code as a new pull request to make the, the MP1 working uh, in the SD card mode because the pull request is only concerning the, the, the engineering mode. And there is all the STM32 peripherals to test, uh, QDEC, SPI, PI, P, PWM, uh, ADC, GAC, and the GMA uh, urge work uh, to do uh, uh, on this. Uh, and the new feature will be the, there will be two new features, the HSEM uh, to protect shared resources, uh, mainly um, uh, external interrupts and uh, GPIOs, and uh, implement some uh, uh, the interprocessor communication protocol, IPCC. Um, my thing is to use the, the core uh, MBOX already included in Riot. I don't know if it, it, if it will. Uh, uh, do the job for, for that, but uh, I want to have a check at it. And um, the last thing would, that would be great is to inc um, integrate um, Riot um, into uh, using kconfig into uh, a Vilwood package or into Yocto recipe uh, when you build your uh, Linux BSP, uh, the Riot firmware is built to and integrated to the, to the BSP and already flashed on the board and automatically started. Uh, so for that, all is already in place. There is just the, the recipe or the, the make file to write, the recipe for Yocto or the make file to write for Um Thank you very much. And uh, if you have any question. Thanks very much. And uh, thanks for the, for the demo uh, noticed uh, for the last talk. Uh, <laughs> always good to see uh, some terminal action here. Um, um, so there are some questions already um, in the chat. Um, so uh, Dylan uh, wanted to know, um, so is ST providing a protocol to allow communication between Riot and uh, uh, on, on, on the CM and uh, Linux on the Cortex-A? Yes. Um, um, yes, so it, is based, uh, it is based on, uh, on uh, uh, OpenAMP. Uh, and uh, so uh, it's an, uh, an external package, um, and I'm not sure that the, the license of this package could be uh, compliant with the uh, the, the Riot uh, licensing and neutral uh, uh, philosophy. So um, the idea is to uh, develop uh, the the IPCC uh, driver and use the mailbox uh, principle just um, upper uh, this. Uh, uh, this um, uh, this driver. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thanks for the answer. Um, um, are there other questions? I I have a question. So um, uh, this type of uh, um, combined uh, uh, bigger CPU and an, and an MCU. Um, um is is used in some other products like uh this nxp imx8 
Yeah. Um, do, do do how much of your uh, of your approach can, and in, uh, can be reused? Uh, you think in um, in this context, for example. Yes, um, there is uh, IMX8 and uh, IMX, so one IMX6, uh, the, 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 the Solo X that has also uh, Cortex M4 uh, included. Um, I never used them uh, with uh, IMX6 for the, 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 the Cortex A, A, A9, yes, but not uh, with the Cortex M4. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, I'm not sure but I think it's Dylan that made the pull request on this uh, on the EMX8. EM, uh, but I think it there should be uh, some uh, equivalent mechanism. Um, and uh, we could think also to reuse some kind of um, uh, layer on top of uh, serial bus communication to make uh, uh, to make um, uh, an independent uh, 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 MPU uh, um, told to an independent uh, MCU. Finally, here we are in the same chip, but uh, why not talking uh, even if the if the the, the chip are uh, um, separated? Thanks. Thank you. Um, are there other other questions? No. Um, then um, thank you very much, uh, Gilles, uh, again for your presentation, and thanks for uh, all the speakers for this session, uh, which we can uh, now end. Um, so.